In this movie, we're going to take a look at the Extrude Faces and Cut Faces tool. We're going to use the Extrude tool to create our character, which we have our reference material for already loaded up, and we have our crow that we'll be modeling. We're going to start by creating a primitive polygon cube, and just move that up to the neck area of our character. And we'll scale this out a little bit and rotate it so that it fits into the general shape. And let's move that up just a little bit. Okay, now we can start to extrude. And I'll go in and select the bottom face. And we'll choose Edit Mesh, Extrude. And we'll pull that down and we'll continue to work in a side view as much as possible. We'll have to switch back to perspective periodically just to make sure that we're selecting the right face. And I want to rotate that up and shape that so that it fits within our reference material properly. Now let's switch back to our perspective here real quick. And we're going to extrude again. Go to Edit Mesh, Extrude. Now, when I extrude, I get the extrude manipulator, which actually has lots of different features to it. First, we have an extrusion here, and I can pull this extrusion out by grabbing in the Z axis. That'll pull that geometry away. The manipulator that I have here is a universal manipulator. So it allows me to do translation and also rotation and scale. I can switch to scale by clicking on any one of the cubes that surround the move tool. In the center, we can scale uniformly, or we can click on any one of the cubes to scale in a single axis. To switch to rotate, we'll just click on the ring, and then we can grab any one of the rings to rotate our extrusion. We also have a floating menu that allows us to alter the thickness, offset, or divisions of that particular extrusion. I'm going to switch to a shaded view. And we'll start at the bottom there. If I middle mouse on divisions, I can then scroll left to right and increase the amount of subdivisions in the extrusion itself. We can also click on the field and enter in a value and hit enter. Just going to return that back to one division. We don't need anything extra there. We can also modify the offset or the thickness by again middle mousing and dragging. Let's switch back to our side view and continue manipulating this extrusion. And I'm going to rotate this. And as I rotate here, what I'm doing is trying to follow the contours of my character. So I'm going with the flow and the shape of the crow's body. And we'll pull that down just a little bit more. And I'll extrude again by hitting G to repeat my last command. And we'll pull that out. And again, use our manipulator to shape that extrusion up. And we'll scale uniformly. And anytime I want to switch back, I'll just click on my move tool. And we can click on any one of those arrows just to engage the tool. And we'll toggle kind of back and forth here between all three of our operations to get this positioned properly. And that one's kind of important because this is going to be where we pull the leg out. So eventually we'll come back and do another extrusion there to get that. But we'll continue on. I hit G and pull out another extrusion. And we'll take this one all the way down to the end or the crow's tail. And let's move back up to the top, where we'll now grab another face up there. Now let's make sure that we've selected it, and we've got it. And we'll extrude again to pull out the head. And we'll scale just to kind of get that shape. Lift that up a little bit, just kind of defining where it arcs over there. And now I have a decent face right here, and we can select that and extrude this out for the beak. Now here, if I pull straight, we'll see that it's going to go into the direction of the surface normal. So that's the face right there, and we're pulling into that direction that the face was going. I'm going to undo that because I actually just want to pull that straight out and kind of using my world axis to pull that out in the Z. 
So we can toggle this button right here to switch from our local space to world space. So we'll click on that. We'll see that the manipulator changes. And now we can just pull that out straight. We'll go to scale and shape that up. And that gives us just a nice primitive object that we can begin to add further detail to. Let's go back down to the leg area and we'll do some further extrusions here. We'll extrude a section out here first that will kind of represent the upper thigh portion or hip area of our leg. And for this, let's activate our modeling toolkit. So over where our channel box is here, we're going to click on the modeling toolkit tab, which will expose that. And we'll turn it on by clicking on our little power button up there at the top. And let's scroll down and we can choose extrude. And we'll also shut off that grid. Now I hit extrude and it's using the default values that are currently inside of our extrude options. We don't have to keep these. In fact, I'll just scroll and bring that back up. And I can interactively change the depth of that extrusion. And I'm going to switch over to my scale tool and just scale that in. And then go to my move tool and we'll just kind of bring this back up a little bit. And so now this gives us a nice area to pull the rest of that leg out. And let's switch to a side view and see how the alignment is going. We need to change that a bit. And we probably ought to make that a little bit smaller. And we'll shift that over. And we'll rotate this just so that when we extrude, we'll be going in the right direction. Again, really trying to pay attention to the flow of our character. That'll work. And we could uh, hit extrude again. Now notice the local Z there. This is my offset. It remembered what I had set it to previously. And when I hit extrude, it just repeated that command. And immediately I can just left click and interactively update that. And now I'm just using my hotkey R to scale that and W to get back to my move tool and E to get to my rotate to position that leg up. And then we'll extrude again and bring that extrusion down to the foot. And we'll rotate that so it's pretty planar down there so that we can pull the rest of the foot and toes out. We'll just shape that up there. And yet another extrusion through our modeling toolkit. And this one, we're gonna have to modify a bit, but we just wanna bring that straight down and that's going to create a center cube that will then be able to extrude all of our toes from. Now I just hit Q to get back to the select tool. And we're going to extrude from here just a small little segment. So right now we've got a rather large segment and we'll just bring that back in. And this will create a surface in between each of our toes. And let's hit G, repeat that command and just pull that out. That's gonna give us a nice base there for all of our toes. And now that I'm kind of looking at this in the front view, I can see that my two outer faces there are nice and square, but the internal face here is a little large. And actually the back looks good. It's really just the front face that's given me a problem there. I'm gonna select my vertices and we'll just kind of shape this up a bit. Let's grab the two outer vertices there as well. And we'll just try to square this off a little bit and we'll pull that back. There we go. Okay, now we can pull toes from each of these sections here, as well as our back. We got a little extra selected there, but we'll just grab those and we can do our extrude to pull out those toes. Make these just a little smaller and we'll do a scale. And the scale that I wanna do needs to be local to each of the faces. Now I can do that through my extrude manipulator but I gotta get back to it since I've selected something else. So I'll go to my channel box, click on the poly extrude tab, and then I'll go up to modify, transformation tools, and I'll click on the show manipulator tool. And that'll bring up that universal manipulator of my extrude tool. And I'm gonna click on any one of those scale cubes and just uniformly scale those down. And we'll switch back to our toolkit, hit extrude. That seems to be about the right size that we're going for there. 
And I want to get that show manipulator back up and scale those down a little bit further. Okay, so I got most of my extrusions done. Now it's just a matter of shaping up. We'll level those toes off so that they're planar to the ground. But one thing I do want to clean up is these faces here that's really blocky. His foot just wouldn't have that shape. What we can do here is go to Target Weld as part of our modeling toolkit. We'll choose that, and once I choose a tool over in my modeling toolkit, it will power on automatically. And with this tool, we want to switch to Vertex Selection. And we're already there in multi-component, but I'm just going to switch over to Vertex. And it gives me a pre-selection highlight of a vertice. And this will allow me then to drag to another vertice and merge. So we can just quickly click on it. And it already shows me that pre-selection. And all I need to do is let go. So if I click on this vert here, it's pointing to that one. I don't want it. But if I come over to the side here just a little bit, it highlights it and I can let go at this point. I don't need to come all the way over. And we can merge those down and we'll go ahead and merge some more there. And now we have a nice base shape. And again, we can start to shape up, start to clean up, and then continue to add more geometry.